Good evening and welcome to the June 25th, 2024 regular meeting of the, you can't close it, Sheila, you have to leave them open. You gotta leave uh, the door open. You gotta leave them open. This one door? Oh yeah, one door, one's enough. Okay. Yeah, I, one's I know good. it has to, I know you need to. You should, <laughs> we figured you did. But. Sorry, I Just apologize for the interruption for the millions watching at home. Um, welcome to the 20, June 25th, 2024 regular meeting of the Town of Milton Select Board. I'd ask that everyone present please stand and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Um, some of you who are here in attendance know, and some of you who are home watching, that uh, we begin tonight's meeting with a note of sadness and tragedy that has happened in our community this past two days. A young mother, a wife, a daughter, a friend to many, uh, passed away suddenly yesterday on a morning walk, Kate Middleton. They said to our school chair, Lizzie Carroll, in a meeting we were in yesterday, um, tomorrow is never guaranteed, so always appreciate today. So I'm going to ask for a moment of silence for everyone in attendance in her memory. Um, she was a significant contributor to this town. She was an MFE. She was the founder, I believe, of Milton Porch Fest. It's the one thing, one way, the way I know her the best is anyone who knows me, music is very large in our family, in our home, and we talked a few times about just different ways on different events, promoting music in this town. So I'm going to ask for a moment of silence, and then I know that Mr. Zoll especially is very close to her, and he is going to say a few things, and if any of the other members wish to comment, they may as well. So if you would all join me in a moment of silence for life, Kate Miller. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Zoll. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I don't want to um, go on for too long. You can. Um, <laughs> I, uh, and many people in this town knew Kate very well. She was a, a, a lifelong Milton resident and um, friend to so many people. Um, her husband, Pat, worth keeping him and Sophie and Joe, their kids, in our, in our thoughts and our prayers. Um, Kate was just a, a, a consummate um, volunteer. She would do anything for anybody at any given time. Um, her love of Porch Fest, her creation of Porch Fest, I've got my, one of my many Porch Fest t-shirts on today um, in her memory. Um, it's, it's, it's always been my favorite, and I've said it many times, my favorite event in Milton, uh, because it's really just about everybody getting together and, and celebrating our town and celebrating music, and, and, uh, and her presence is gonna be just so deeply missed this year, so. Um, there is a GoFundMe that's uh, been started up for her. Uh, if you're interested in supporting that, please email me, and I'd be very happy to send you the link um, to support uh, to support her family, um, who are, I'm sure, just absolutely adrift uh, without her in their life. Um, Kate loved birds as well uh, as I. I also love birds, and I hope that if you're watching or listening or here tonight, and you see a nice bird, uh, whether it's a cardinal or a chickadee, just think of Kate and, uh, and how much she brought to Milton and how she'll continue to be a presence in this town for many, many years to come. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Zoll. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Okay, moving on. We're gonna move to item number three, public comment. Um, we allow 21 minutes total in total for public comment, three minutes per speaker. Uh, Mr. Milano will keep the total record of um, 
21 minutes to keep us within it. I will do each speaker at three minutes each. Um, last week we had a lot of speakers as well. And between Zoom and present, we did every speaker got to speak in the 21 minutes. So I'm hoping that we're able to do that tonight. Um, so do we have a sign? I think we have a sign up list already. So I'm going to try and do as many people in person first. Um, I'll try to do as many people in person first because you've taken the time to get here and then I'll <laughs> alternate back. I don't see, I see 12, I don't see any hands raised. Not just, right now. No, correct. I don't see any hands raised. Well, that's a good thing. So we may be, we may, we may be two weeks in a row. So first on the list is my friend Sheila Varela. You get two minutes and 20 seconds. <laughs> okay. Three minutes here. No, I'm kidding. Three minutes. Don't worry. I'll let you know. I'll let you know when you're at 30 seconds. I got it here, just in case. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Shirley Egan Varela. I live at 70 Lyman Road, and I'm also a town meeting member, um, Precinct 8. I am here tonight to advocate for placement of the debt consolidation override to build a new school to be placed on our November ballot. And for the operational override once voted um, at Maytown meeting to be placed on a separate ballot in June of 2025. I have a little experience in this field since I've co-chaired the last three overrides and also served as precinct captain in eight for the last debt consolidation overrides. My husband and I co-chaired 2006, Yes for Milton, with Kay and Dave Bullis over from Precinct 1, which we won. We also co-chaired Invest in Milton with Marianne Rell, a great realtor in town in 2009, which uh, at the time, Chief Wells was a big part in, in that success because he advocated for the safety part of it, which we had never had before. And I always am grateful to him for that because I don't think we would have won in the height of a recession without that. And in 2017, I wrangled parents Terry McNeil and Matt King along, and uh, when I was on school committee. And along with my good friend, Kathy Fagan, who's a former select board member, we taught them how to run an operational override in 2017, Milton for All. Um, and as I said, I also served for a debt consolidation precinct captain for Safe and Equal Schools, which finished Cunningham and Collicott, and also the beautiful renovation and extension of the Milton Public Library. And I'm just here to tell most of you who do know or don't know, it's really hard to teach people about Proposition Two and a Half. It, a law that happened in 1979 in our town, and <clears throat> and and turnout, no matter how hard you work, um, it's never that it's never that big in June, and you have to work really hard to educate them why we need it, where the cuts will be on operational overrides, et cetera, et cetera. And then debt consolidation is its own separate thing. And you have to explain why we need them for one purpose. And I think with the presidential election coming up, already getting a high turnout in November, not to place that and just focus on educating them about debt consolidation first, will have a better chance of winning, you'll build momentum, and then come June, you'll especially have that whole parent community, as most of you know, they're the ones that run the override, they're the ones that share it, they wrangle all the precinct captains, and will be will achieve success in both arenas. Even this last big um, vote, we had the MBTA Communities Act, as you know, you chaired it, sir, uh, for one of them, we still only had 40% turnout. We don't have good turnout in local elections. It's hard to get people to the polls. So why would you not use that November election and take the time this summer and early fall to educate them and win both times? 15 so seconds. If, if, it, if it all matters that I have won all those times and you uh, value my opinion at all about how you get to win on both things, please separate them and do the right thing. Thank you for your time. Nice. 259. <laughs> True professional. <laughs> Lindsay. I'll try to do 90 seconds and give my seconds to somebody else if they'd like it. Uh, my name is Lindsay DiGennaro. You don't I, have to do that. You just take your three. <laughs> <laughs> I am a town meeting member for Precinct 6. I've been in Milton for 13 years. I'm a mom to rising third and fifth graders, which makes me feel very old, uh, at Collicott. I'm also the co-president of the Collicott PTO, and I have been for some years now. Um, I know firsthand the support that the parents have given to our teachers who are 
being burdened with losing any kind of planning space, increased class sizes, um, so on and so forth. I voted yes on the land swap. I want to be here because, excuse me, I'm here because we just can't keep pushing this off on our teachers and our students who are suffering from these increased class sizes. Um, we're in closets, we're using our library, and everyone has seen it. Um, it's real, and if we keep delaying it, it's only gonna get worse before it ever gets better. Um, I, I very rarely publicly speak about any of this because I like to be behind the scenes, but when I heard that the EA gave a very positive determination for us, and I still then heard that some of the select board members were hesitating on putting this on the ballot in November, I was like, why, why? We have the land, we have the plan, but now we have this government behind us. Um, and I think it would be an extremely, extremely disservice to our teachers and our staff to keep putting this off on them to manage. Um, and it's time the community steps up, get it on the ballot in November and let the, let the community decide um, so that we can keep this moving forward because it's, it's really important. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jason. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jason Ehrenberg. I live at 68 Cheever Street in Milton. I vote with fidelity. I never miss an election. No matter what month it's, you know, no matter voted, when it is. I my fidelity's <laughs> on the ballot. <laughs> uh, and I express my, my uh, opinions to my town meeting members. And yet this is my very first select board meeting. So I think it would be appropriate for me to thank you all for your service. Uh, you put thank in you. a lot more time than I do. And I think that deserves a lot of props. So thank you for that. Uh, I am supportive of the new school and I'm here to advocate on behalf of the debt exclusion, uh, putting that on the, the November ballot. I volunteer quite a bit. My job is flexible and I have the, the good fortune to be able to go into the schools quite a bit and I have seen the overcrowding firsthand. And it strikes me as common sense. Some others have spoken to this already so I won't repeat them, but it just strikes me like this is needed. Uh, I've seen it and I think it's going to get worse and I think the costs are only going to go up if we delay and I'm just curious I think we could stand to have a lot more debate or discussion or understanding in this town and I hope that we can move that forward put it to the voters let them know where they stand if if you're not in favor of this I hope to learn why and are, and are you persuadable? Are, are, are there things that you can cite that could be overcome? Could we, could we get to a, a solution that people could, uh, that, that a way that it could move forward that you would feel good about? So I'm here to both advocate and also to listen. Thank you for your time and your service. Thank you. Thank you. Meg. Hello there. This is also my first select board meeting, so thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Meg Dietrich. I live at 79 Martin Road. I am a Precinct 9 town meeting member and have been a resident in Milton for 15 years. Um, I he am here today to speak about the article that was in the Milton Times last year that showed pictures of the overcrowding issues in the schools. Um, I had a unique opportunity last year where I was a substitute teacher for the math interventionist at Cunningham Elementary School. When I was hired to do this position, I knew it was only for a number of months. And the first question was, well, where, where will I be helping these students who are in need of extra math support? And where I was first put was in a hallway by a bathroom, which seemed very disruptive for these students. Second, I was in the assistant principal's office, which clearly was needed for other administrative roles and duties that were being fulfilled in the school. And lastly, where I ended up working for the following two months was in the fourth floor stairwell that leads up to the attic at Cunningham Elementary. I bring this to your attention because I know it was seen in pictures and I've overheard it at coffee break or other places where, oh, that can't be real. That can't be an actual situation where someone is teaching in that environment. And I really want to stress the urgency in these kids already needed extra support with math. And here they're being asked to be taught in a stairwell in an attic that's not meant to be an environment for learning. 
So I bring that unique perspective. And also just as a parent, I have a rising seventh, fifth and first grader. My fifth grader has told me she can't eat lunch some days because she doesn't have enough time because of the uh, amount of students that they need to feed. I know music is on a cart and it goes into these classrooms. I really hope that understanding the importance of class size and space is a value to the education of our students and the reputation of our town. So I urge you to put this on the ballot in November and thank you for your time today. Camilla. It's like being at the registry waiting for your number to be called. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, my name is Camila Chaparro. I live at 19 Chilton Park. I'm also a town meeting member in Precinct 4. Thank you for the opportunity to speak and also for, thank you for putting the middle school on the agenda this evening for the select board meeting. I'm the parent of two sons. I have a rising fifth grader at Tucker and a rising seventh grader at Pierce. My sons will likely be too old to be students at the new middle school by the time it is built, yet I am still here urging you to move forward with the school building project and place the debt exclusion override on the November ballot. It is clear and the last speaker um, made it even more clear that we need to address in a more permanent way the overcrowding that our children have been experiencing for years. My older son was part of a half planet at Pierce last year, an additional team that had to be created at Pierce because his sixth grade class was so large. That half planet is gonna be a full planet next year with the full amount of students because the incoming sixth grade class is even larger than his was. So the overcrowding issue isn't going away. And while the schools have figured out how to make it work by teaching in hallways, by teaching in stairwells, our kids deserve better. Which is why I will also support when the time comes an operational override to address all of the other issues and needs that our schools have. I don't see this as an either or situation. I think we need to make both happen for our kids. And a delay not only means more money, it means more kids learning in suboptimal environments. I know Milton takes a lot of pride in its schools and all that our children achieve. If you think about our one of a kind French immersion program, our state champion football teams, our stellar theater programs at Pierce and at the high school, there's so much to be proud of. And we, like many other families here, I imagine, moved to Milton because of the schools. Our town remains a desirable place to live in because of the schools. Our, our property values remain high because of the schools. Investments in education benefit not just residents with children, but the entire community, both now and in the future. My kids benefited from the investments that were made 20 some years ago by our town to rehabilitate the schools. And so I'm now here asking you to please continue that legacy of providing for our children by doing your part in moving the school building project forward. Please place the debt exclusion override on the November ballot. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cachello. <clears throat> Good evening. Thank you very much. Oh, I am. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Tony Cicello, Precinct uh, 4 Town Meeting Member. Um, as the others, I'm here to urge you to put the uh, debt exclusion override on the ballot this fall and an operational override uh, in the spring. Um, in addition to being a town meeting member, maybe relevant here, I'm a past member, a uh, former vice chair and chair of the school building committee that rebuilt all six t schools in the town uh, 20 years ago. Um, I'm also a, a former uh, chair of the consolidated facilities committee that was set up after that project to ensure the proper stewardship of our school buildings. And I bring these up in part because I think there are important inflection points that citizens and towns have where they make important decisions that help chart the course of the town for years to come. I think the school building project back in the early 2000s was such a project that I think we're reaping great benefits from that. I think the Consolidated Facilities Committee setting that structure up 
was something that made paid great dividends to the town. Both of these projects took courage. The town borrowed over a hundred million dollars in 2000 when they decided to do this. Who would have, the town, I don't think it ever borrowed $10 million before this. It was an enormous commitment. Now, fortunately, we got an enormous funding from the state for that project, and it ended up being a $150 million project, and the town paid $30 million for it. But, but it was enormous. It took some courage on the part of the town at the time. It took some courage on the part of both the Board of Selectmen and the school committee and the school administration at the time of the Consolidated Facilities Committee to try a new system for the school department to cede some control over its buildings to try to ensure the stewardship of them. They did that then. Now we're hearing from these parents who are living the situation where hmm. it's, it's staggering how similar the discussion of the overcrowding in our schools is. 30, 30 seconds, so 30 seconds. <laughs> All right. This is another inflection point. I think you've heard a lot about how important it is to educate people about the specifics of the override. I think that's much better done one at a time. And for those that fear that the town won't do one and then the other, I think the town is up for this challenge. It is a challenge, but it's gonna require a lot of work. And I ask you to put these on sequentially. Thank you. Thank you. Where are we at? How are we, we time-wise? Uh, seven minutes left. And one, oh, I got Meg. Meg's on the, Meg, you signed up twice? Um, Pete Jackson. And we do have one online. Okay, I'm going to get to it. I think I have enough time to do both. That's yep. why. I'll go to Phil Matthews afterwards online. Good evening. Um, my name is Peter Jackson. I live at uh, Capen Street in Precinct 2. Um, thanks for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, I'm not opposed to schools. I've always supported every override and every um, school building project. Um, I am opposed to this project as it currently stands um, because I don't believe in taking uh, park and conservation land for building other public facilities. It's hard to get those lands, and I think that it, I'm opposed to taking those, and I'm, I'm opposed to the illegal process that was used to, to uh, select this site that's being proposed for this. Um, it was mentioned earlier that the uh, Secretary of Environmental Affairs made a determination on a very small part of uh, this project, and that had to do with the natural resources value. To me, what's more instructive is not what they did find, uh, but it's what they didn't address and didn't find. Um, the the uh, document doesn't determine whether the replacement parcels are eligible to be replacements. Um, the secretary specifically says that it does not indicate that the secretary takes any position on the project or whether it complies with the EEA Article 97 land disposition policy. Um, it doesn't review whether they, not only the land disposi disposition policy, but whether it complies with the Commonwealth's known at loss policy. It didn't review at all the adequacy of the alternatives considered. Um, even though many alternatives have been suggested to the uh, school building committee and, and uh, to EEA that seem to be feasible. It didn't review at all whether the real estate appraisal that was part of the process and submitted by the town, whether it complies um, with the EEA standards for appraisals, um, even though it's very apparent that it doesn't apply and that the uh, town's own contract uh, with the appraiser was not fulfilled. Um, it doesn't review whether there's two proposed land conver conversions. One is with the Conservation Commission and one is with the Park Board. And it, neither the town submittal to the state. 30 seconds, Mr. Jackson. Whether the town submittal to the state nor the state's response identifies that there are two different land conversions and that the proposed replacement parcel, parcel for the parks um, parcel 
has no recreational value and is uh, polluted and full of um, de buried debris. A, well, a very developable parcel is, um, is being taken. Um, we don't have the land, and there's no assurance that we will get the land. We don't have a cost. How can you ask the voters to um, sign, docu sign away um, something you know, what, for a building when they don't know where it's going to be located or what it's going to cost. Exactly. So exactly. I urge you not to uh, put this on the ballot at this time. Thank you. Mr. Matthews, can you, can you unmute him? Uh, yep. One second, I will promote him now. Mr. Matthews, you can start speaking. <laughs> Phil, are you there? You need to unmute. Here he comes now. Okay. Give him a minute. <laughs> Phil, can you unmute? Okay. Sorry. That's all right. Um, this election only appears after you start, by the way. That's all right. I feel this election is like maybe uh, Phil Matthews, Town Meeting Member Precinct 3, I fear the select board may be moving toward the flawed decision of wait uh, to put the debt exclusion override on the ballot, on the same ballot as an operational override. I'm also told it's believed this gives the best chance of success for both, and Brookline is cited as a good example of success. But I think the wrong lesson is being drawn from Brookline's experience as it might apply to Milton. In the spring of 2023, Brookline put an operational and debt exclusion override on the same ballot. The operational override passed 63 to 39 percent, a 22 point victory margin that is not out of step with past Brookline successes with overrides. The debt exclusion override, however, passed 51 to 49 percent, a 309 vote margin out of 12,297 votes cast. Just 155 vote switches and the question would have failed. Mm -hmm. They were surprised, even shocked in Brookline since nothing even close to this had ever happened before. The lesson to be drawn from Brookline for Milton is that two overrides on a single ballot in Milton greatly jeopardizes the debt exclusion override. After all, Milton is not Brookline. Milton has had success with overrides, most especially because of the campaign committees who do the work. They come together in six to seven weeks between town meeting and the vote, raise the money, develop the campaign strategy, messaging, produce the literature, organize standouts, literature drops, lawn signs, and get out the vote out. efforts. We are fortunate that it was success. Sheila Varela is an example of that. I think if you ask them, and I've asked a few that I've worked with campaigns on, they would agree that a standalone campaign in November for the debt exclusion provides the best chance of its success. Time is running short. This board needs to put on the agenda of its next meeting a discussion and vote concerning the November ballot question. The voters need to know where every member stands. Two members are running for higher office and will be on the ballot in September and possibly November. I suspect most voters will want to factor into their consideration the positions on such an issue of vital importance to Milton and to those concerned about the educational welfare of our children. Please don't make a very consequential mistake. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. That concludes Citizen Speak. Do we have any time? Did we go over? There's a minute. Minute over? Ish. A minute we left. Done. A minute oh, left. we're done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. And move on to item four, which is a discussion on this project. And I yield the floor to Mr. Milano. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, a couple of the quick updates I wanted to cover have been more or less addressed during um, some of the public comments. But just to recap, um, we did receive a letter from EEA this week that and their determination, uh, the replacement land included in the so-called land swap is of comparable or greater natural resource value. Um, they note that the replacement land would create um, additional buffers of and blocks of conserved open space and uh, buffer wetland resources along Pine Tree Book. Brook, excuse me, that was received 
um, last week. The school building committee has continued their work. They met last night um, and did vote on a preferred layout of the school uh, project. Um, that meeting will be on the Milton Access YouTube page if it's not already. Uh, today we received some um, follow-up questions on the legislation from Senate Council through Senator Timothy's office. So we're, um, we've responded to one, we'll follow up on the other um, to clarify that. I did speak to Sean O'Rourke, who is available to come into a meeting um, to uh, update the board on the project. Um, and we had talked about doing that in July anyway, so he just confirmed he's available. And I, I think um, one component there is the cost um, piece of what the school might cost. And uh, he is working to have um, updated forecasts for the select board's consideration. Um, so that's just kind of some of the procedural updates. And I'm just going to do very quick run through of some of the process um, elements here, uh, just so we're all kind of on the same page. And I wanted to do this so that we could um, share what the process could look like for putting an operating override and a debt exclusion on the ballots, what goes into that, what the timelines are, and what some sequential options are, so that this board, as it considers its options over the next few weeks, um, has kind of all the information. So I'll run through those. Um, relatively quickly and obviously if there are questions I'm happy to take them and let the board discuss and really what I'm seeking to take away from this is if there's information the board needs to kind of guide its decision making let's you know let us know and, w and we'll be able to provide that so you can um, make your decision as you see uh, necessary so very quickly prop two and a half uh, restricts how much we can raise each year. An operating override would enable the town to levy additional taxes to go into operating budgets for town departments and school department. A debt exclusion is a authorization to increase taxes to pay for the debt service for a capital project over the duration of the borrowing for that project. Um, here is an example of what an operating override question would look like. Shall the town be allowed to assess an additional X number of dollars of in real estate and personal property taxes for the purposes of funding the operating budgets. Um, two votes are required. The first is a town meeting vote to appropriate a budget. And the second is a ballot question vote to approve the assessment of the additional taxes. And just as a note, it, do, it does not matter which order those two go in. Um, a ballot question can come first. A town meeting vote can take place afterwards. Or typically, what you'll see is a town meeting vote will happen to approve a budget, and then a ballot question would follow. Um, but either sequence is possible. Pretty much the same on a debt exclusion. Um, the difference in the ballot question that voters see is that uh, there isn't a cost associated. It just says, does the, well, should the town be allowed to exempt from the propositions of two and a half, the amounts required to pay for the bonds issued to pay for the cost, in this case, design, construct, and equip a new upper middle school. Um, so again, two, two votes are required here. Um, a town meeting vote to approve a bond authorization. That is a two-thirds majority vote at town meeting, and then a majority vote at the ballot to approve the additional taxes. And again, this can also take place in um, whatever sequence um, is people view as um, best. And I'll have a little bit of table that shows what Milton's practice has been on that matter. So. What are some potential options? Um, this is a kind of a busy slide, but so we've heard some of them already tonight. You know, a school vote on the ballot in this November for the project for the debt exclusion with a town meeting vote either before or after that. And then if an operating override is necessary, do that in the spring, whether that's at the annual town election, at the annual town meeting, or then a special um, town election after the fact. The other option is to put them on the same ballot, again, something that was mentioned tonight at various times, and that could happen whether that's in the fall. Um, they both could be on the ballot in the fall. The ballot question to um, set, a, set a, an amount for an operating override and to approve the school um, borrowing. Um, what the ov override hap if the override were to take place in that sequence, what you'd be looking at is a request to increase taxes mm -hmm. followed by an appropriation of those additional funds at an annual town meeting. And Milton, the budget has to be set at the annual town meeting. Um, so a, the more typical routine is for an operating override to occur in the spring. And that's the third potential sequence here would be that both votes happen in the spring. And 
you know, it's really up to the select board as to when to stage those, whether it would be on the annual town election ballot, special town election, um, and so forth. And then just lastly, historically, what has happened in Milton? Um, so we just pulled a, a, a few recent examples. May of 17, town meeting to set a operating budget contingent on a subsequent override that happened in June. That same happened in May of 20, 2009, um, followed by a just June special election to approve the override. Um, and then the last two debt exclusions, February of 21, to approve um, the fire station projects. And that question ended up being on the annual um, town election, the ballot question that went with it. And then in October of 05 was a special town meeting followed by a special election in November of 05. Um, and the lastly, why we're talking about this now is that to put this question or any question on the ballot in November does require um, the select board through the town clerk to notify the secretary of the Commonwealth by the first Wednesday in August, which is August 7th. So it's first Wednesday, first Wednesday in August, yeah. August 7th. So that is why we're um, talking about this now. There is a deadline. Um, and as we move forward over the next four or five weeks, these are this is the deadline that is in mind. Um, so if there are questions, there's there's information that we can be helpful in providing to the board and to others on on how to make this decision. Uh, we're available to ha to help. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to give that kind of overview to um, clarify and and pick up on, on many of the public comments made today about timing and sequencing and what the options of the board are. So with that, I'll I'll close my portion and uh, turn it over to you, Mr. Chair. Motion to adjourn, can we go home now? <laughs> Even in the heaviest of decisions, you have to have humor. I say this very often. Mr. Cohane? Yeah, so I'm going to begin. Mr. Cohane, go ahead. I know everyone wants to hear good news, so I'm exposing myself to getting thrown under the bus, but I feel that I must do it for our schools and our children. I have grandsons and Ooh, my mother. <laughs> I'm sure I start over. <laughs> Go ahead, Probably. start again, yeah. I Everyone start. wants to hear good news and I'm exposing myself to getting thrown under the bus, but I feel I must do it for our schools and our town. I have grandsons in the schools. I toured Cunningham and Collicott last week. We need an immediate solution, I agree. The staff's doing an incredible job, but they're at the end of their rope. I, for one, will not forget them for what they are doing. But this urgency was exacerbated by spending three to four years chasing this land. And even with today's good news, it's still uncertain. Not, I'm not comfortable with the speed at which we're going through the preliminary design and budget process in just a matter of weeks, actually days now that we're talking about talking about it on the 9th. The latest update was that note, um, which will be making a cost presentation in, on the 9th. It's hard enough to establish a budget with a full set of plans in front of you and plenty of time. When we'll know the real cost is when the bids come in. If we're going to get a debt exclusion passed, I am told by those more knowledgeable than me that it's not going to be easy and a key factor in its success will be building confidence in the budget especially. We've spent years on this process chasing the land. Let's not rush through the most important parts. The actual design, we've come all this way, but if we do rush through this early design and budgeting phase, then it's likely to change and the budget will as a result during the process. I cannot support scheduling an immediate debt override under these conditions. Mr. Walsh, can I, next is all can I ask Mr. Cohen a quick question? Sure. Uh, Mr. Cohen, can I ask you, um, who wrote that uh, for you? I did. You wrote that whole thing Every yourself. word. Okay, so you said in that, um, wiser heads than you have told you that this is difficult. Can you I've talked to people around town. So can you identify some of them? I, I don't know exactly who it was. But they're wiser mm. than you, but you don't know who they are. Yeah, well, they're more knowledgeable in the town than me. But you don't know who they are. That's I don't remember exactly who Mr. told Zoll, me. No. Zoll, okay, I'm just trying to I'm just I, I feel like it's a fair question, Mr. I know, He's I get it. I just. Us that there are wise people that are telling us something. We're not in court. One would expect. We're not I mean, in court. If they rode up on camels out of the east bearing gold, frankincense, and myrrh, then I can understand not, not knowing who they were, although you might have an idea. But if they're just telling you this, but you don't know who they are, I find that extraordinarily problematic. So. Just a couple of quick things. When this town was asked by a number of citizens to have an election that was illegal, to violate a state law, we voted unanimously to support the town and have an election. 
Now we have folks coming up to us telling us that they want to have an election. They're not asking us what we think. They're just asking for the opportunity to vote. Yeah. That's a very simple thing, to ask for the opportunity to vote. That was what the MBT override vote was, or the MBTA uh, Communities Act was. And despite having strong misgivings and despite the, having the opportunity to go to court to challenge the, the validity of having such an election, I felt it was our responsibility on the select board to listen to the residents, which we hear from members on this board all the time. Listen to the residents. The residents are speaking to us right now. And except for these anonymous wise folks, the folks who are here who have given us their names, who have given us their addresses, who have told us who they are and what they do and how long they've worked in this town and how much they care for this town, they're just asking for the opportunity to have an election. That's all they're asking for. They're not, they understand how things work. And to say that this is gonna to be too difficult to do now versus in the spring, we've heard compelling evidence and also our past history in 2005, in 2000, that where we've had a debt exclusion election in the fall and an override in the spring, that that's the way that we've done it, historically as a town, back 20 plus years. So the wiser heads in this room who have run committees, who have served this town, who have been in front of us, have told us this is the way to do it. And again, if you want to vote no on it, that's fine. If you want to vote yes on it, that's fine. But we should vote on it. And we know that in November, it's our best chance. And I say, if this board does not allow the citizens to vote in November on this, then shame on us. And it never should we ever pretend that we represent all of the citizens, because all of the citizens deserve a chance to have a vote. And if we don't give that to them, then we have broken our trust with the public. That's all I'll say. May I comment? I don't, I don't, right, so let's, let's do, let's, let's, before I go on, yes, look at, and I'm saying this as chair, and I give great deference to, well, Ms. Varel and Mr. Chacon, who I've been in the trenches with more times than I can count. And as you, I didn't expect Sheila to mention one of them tonight, but she did. And there are people, as you know, I mean, Chair Carroll and the superintendent, Nick and I have been meeting now for over a month weekly the one thing before you comment on the one thing that no one has mentioned in this room tonight no one which is the most significant hurdle it is a mount everest type hurdle that is before us is the dollar figure this isn't about a vote of yes and we're talking about and you heard mr chicago mm -hmm. say this we're talking well in excess of a hundred million dollars on the backs of the taxpayers by themselves, we've never, Tony, Tony was right. It was 100 million, and we got 90% plus 10 million from Copeland on top of it. It only wound up being six schools for $30 million. That was the third vote. It's the only time it passed. On the two priors, it did not pass. It failed as a debt exclusion twice. So historically, I get emotion is not going to get us there. Strategy is the only thing that is going to win this override. There aren't many things I know a lot of. I know a lot about overrides in this town. Go ahead, Mr. Cohen. And then let's, my, let's then just continue with comments, but I don't want to go back. Go ahead, John. My, my point here was exactly what was just said. It's the budget. We're going to try to put together the budget in a matter of days, and it's just unrealistic. It, it, I was at the school building committee. We sat down. We had a July, end of July date, and it was a stretch to come up with a budget by then to do preliminary design and come up with a budget. Now, all of a sudden, it's the 9th of July. I just, it's a threat. It's a threat to the project, too. If we don't have the money, we get into it. What happens? I mean, it's, 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 it's the schools, too. We got to have the right budget. And we, we, we just, we're, we're cramming that into, Days. I just. Mr. Chase addressing okay. me. Can I, can so, I ask a question? Right, can I respond? On. Let me just. Let me just. I'm going to try and put this to. Only because it's Mr. I have Milano an important right response to it, though, as well. Okay. We have had Mr. O'Rourke in. With is. Am I right? You can. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the chair, with the superintendent, no one can give us a number. We're here ballpark, and we're picked. And I'm. I said it. I said, well, I'm going out of this room, and I'm saying 150 million, and no one's told me not to. So, all right. Go ahead and that I want to give the other members a chance to speak. Look, we lost, I lost a dear friend yesterday 
this town lost a real advocate yesterday. So I'm, if I'm a little emotional, it's because her memory is, is I get here. It. We get and it. so I apologize. And in the spirit of compromise and trying to come together, I'm just going to say a couple of quick things about the budget. As Mr. Milano indicated earlier, that exclusions never have a number on the ballot. That's just not the way that they're written. So to, that's sort of a, a false concern. If Mr. Cohane really attended this, I'm, I'm sure you attended the school building committee yesterday, then he knows that the school building committee is narrowing down, they're working down the number. And he knows that they'll have the ability to continue to work down that number because the debt exclusion number isn't specific. They'll continue to be able to hone that number. So your hue and cry about us being fiscally irresponsible by pushing this is absolutely false. It's a lie. It's a lie. Yeah. And, excuse me, and so we have a school building committee. They are working on this. They are trying to refine the numbers. I don't know who, again, these anonymous wise men they're that are telling anonymous. you that not, We all this. get, they're not anonymous, but, believe okay, me. Okay, well then not. I would like some names because if there are other select board members, then that's a violation of the open meeting law. Okay. If they're members from other committees, then that's potentially a violation as well. And I think that people should be asking questions because I have to say, Mr. Cohen, you sit in the seat of someone who ran an honest and open and transparent campaign and who was an advocate for the schools. And when the town asked him to put something on the ballot that he didn't like, he did it without question. He did it without reservation. And he fought. And you can ask everybody on this, on this panel. He fought for the people who he disagreed with, with every ounce in his body. And I disagreed with him for that. But he did it because he knew he had an obligation to the town. You have an obligation to the town. You don't have an obligation to whoever that is that wrote that speech for you or helped write that speech I wrote for you. I speech. You right. don't have that obligation. You have an obligation Mr. to these Zoll, other parents. Mr. Zoll, enough. Yeah, I mean, I, I've given you, I mean. I mean, Mr. Wells, we have the ability to speak here. I, I get that, I but it, it's like, look at, I've said this repeatedly. I said it before today. I mean, much of what is being driven is, is coming in here is emotion. And that part kind of bothers me because it's too the two of the speakers who just left, and I include Phil Matthews as well as the third. The ability to win an override, an operational override, is daunting. When Sheila made reference, she referenced Chief Wells. Chief Wells got spanked by the Ethics Commission because I went so far as the police chief in fighting for an override that I st dipped my foot in waters that I shouldn't have, fighting for him, because I believed in it. And I, and I have that do same- Do you believe in this? I do, but I also understand two, th and I don't want, because I, I want to speak class, I don't want, I don't want to, I understand two things. A, no one, with the exception of the meetings that we're having so far, between the chairs and, and our financial people and the superintendent and Nick. No one understands, and no one on this board other than understands how critical an operational override is. In every fiber of me, every moment I've worked for this town, every minute I've ever given, tells me that first and foremost, that has to be what we have to protect above and beyond. because. Especially the schools, as Ms. Bradley knows, how every dollar counts. The cuts to the schools, and you've heard me, Nick, I've said this to the superintendent, like, paint me the picture if you lose the operational override. They don't even want to go there. They don't even want to think about it. So to me, and I, I'm, I talk, talk to, I'll, look, there's no sides to me. I may vote a certain way, I may decide a certain way, but there's no sides. We, represent the town of Milton. And if we're not unified in this and accept that this decision is going to take everyone in this town, because I'm telling you, this is hard. $150 million is, it's unprecedented. And if you looked at the list, we have never had an override in a presidential election of any type, ever, ever. Am I right? 
No. All right. All right. Well, I'm, I'm, in 2000, we had an operational override or debt exclusion. Uh, it wasn't at the presidential, though. It was the presidential primary. It was an election. A oh, primary, not, 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 a, not a November one. But I just, this is daunting. You're talking 150 plus probably another five operational. This, there will be people in this town. But just because it's hard Wait, doesn't mean we should Let me just finish. Let me finish. Chair. I didn't say, okay. I never said we shouldn't vote. Okay. All I've said is, I'm being as strategic from my point. I'm going to be as strategic as I can in this. I did not, and I've, you hear me every day. I've never altered in this, not one single bit. And I'll be honest with you. I've talked to as many former elected officials from former town administrators, school committee people, select board members, moderators. <laughs> Tony, I've been trying to get, I talked to his brother, trying to get a hold of him a week ago. Anyone who's been in this trench, who's been in these fights, who knows the difficulty of how hard we're at, that's what I've been trying to do. Ms. Bradley, you Thank always you. tell me you have something to say. Go ahead. I, I just wanted to take a moment. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Um, is your microphone on? It is. Okay. I'm already good, <laughs> <Okay. Jen. laughs> been, been at this rodeo for a while. <laughs> um, I want to say that there's been two instances, instances since I've been elected where I have been inundated with emails. And the school building is the second one. I have been inundated with emails from our citizens from across the entire town. I've received at least 50 of them that say that they are in favor of putting this on for the November election, including, and I didn't count them this evening, but an additional, I think there's at least seven or eight here that are in favor of it. The people that are not in favor of it, I've received two emails, two. I'm sure you all have received the same ones. Uh, if not, then we should, we should be sharing the emails. Um, but I really think that we can't ignore that and we shouldn't ignore that. We have a responsibility, as we often say, to the entire town. Um, and whether or not there's a motion behind it there's a motion behind it because it's their kids. It's their kids that they're talking about. So of course there's gonna be a motion and there's no way for us as a body to ask people to not be emotional and passionate about something that they moved here for, something that they thought was going to happen, something that really impacts them and their decisions that they make as their mm -hmm. children progress through our school. The cost. You said, Mr. Milano, during your presentation that Mr. O'Rourke is available to talk cost at the next meeting, at the next meeting. Therefore, we will have a number at the next meeting is my understanding of what was said this evening. I'm not sure that's true. I do not. He's I, I available mean, to talk him. cost. He, off, he emailed me today, I but he doesn't have a number, so I didn't. Okay, so he says that he's available to talk cost. So maybe we should think about putting that I'll on. think about it for the July 9th meeting. What? There okay. isn't a July 9th meeting. There, it's the second Tuesday. It's the second Tuesday. I know. When the, we already, I won't, I'm out of state. We said we're going to take that week off. We're not I don't know that we said it's on our so. agenda here as a future meeting date. We did not take it off yet, Mr. Chair. We usually discuss okay. that. Okay. All right. Sorry, I'm just going, I'm not trying to be combative. I'm literally no, just no, looking I get at you. the agenda. I get it. <laughs> um, okay. So, I think that the cost is a big issue, and I think that that's what a lot of, a lot of residents are concerned about. Um, however, in the time that it's been that we've been talking about this school building, just like the animal shelter, it has increased tenfold. And if we continue to stall another, as, as my colleague said, three to four years to find the land, which that was a process in and of itself, which I don't wanna go down that road as to why that took so long. Um, but I was here and I was doing the work on the warrant committee and on the select board when that was happening. So I have firsthand knowledge about why that took so long. Um, but the cost is just going to continue to increase. So no matter what, the cost is going to increase I get that. to our to our residents. OK, so the, the last thing that I wanted to say is that is that we've all taken hard votes on this well mo most of us except for mr Cohane, who's new here but we've taken those hard votes on matters i've not agreed with a lot of my colleagues you all know that it's public record but i think that at this point if we've got 50 emails which is again the second most biggest thing i have been emailed about since i took office the first being the flag 
I think we owe it just to take a vote as a select board. And I'm here to tell you that right now I will be voting in favor of putting this on the November ballot. And but you're right. No, I but know that. Right. I know that. But, you know, Mr. Cohane said he wasn't. So I'm just, you know, we're just going on the same thing here. I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm just telling you where I'm at, Mr. Chair. And I really think that this is something that needs to go to the voters. OK, <clears throat> and that's that's all I'm going to say. I'm trying to say it as respectfully as I can. Um, I wish that the override mm -hmm. or the, you know, the repeal of the MBTA communities didn't have to happen, but it did. We can see from our neighboring cities and towns that there are debt, exclu debt, debt exclusions happening for school buildings. There are overrides happening across the Commonwealth. We are not the only state or only town that's doing that. So for us to put this out there is something that I think our mm -hmm. residents can handle two votes. They can handle the vote in November and they can handle the vote in June. And that is something that I think we owe them is to, to have two, bite, two bites of this, right? It's your, it's your opinion. It I, is my I'm opinion. I'm fine with that. That's, that's fine. It is my opinion. Ms. Musto. Thank you. Um, first of all, just to point out on our agenda, this is an update. This no, we're not, we're, not, we're not voting. No, we're not. It says nothing about a vote or real even discussion. It's an update. But now that we've gone into some discussion. Um, we can discuss on any item that's on the agenda. We're discussing the school Excuse building. Me, I'd like to right. please just just you're you're making please? a point that's not Mr. Correct. Zoll, Excuse Mr. Zoll, Mr. Zoll, please. Go ahead, go ahead Ms. Musto. Go ahead. Please. That's fine. Can you please stop interrupting me? I'm, I'm telling you to go ahead. I can go ahead. I will. Thank you very okay, much. I don't welcome. need your permission. I can do I'm that. Thank you. Could you please stop? Please. Stop it. Okay. So what I'd like to say here is that um, I remember when the override went through and my children um, were young and they did all the schools. That was a tough sell because it's a lot of money and we were so fortunate to get 90% uh, reimbursement and that was still a hard sell. We don't really know the cost at this point and that's a little bit problematic and to um, I think we just don't have the information. We need the information on how much this is going to cost because we are not getting any state funding for this. And so that will be on the backs of the residents. And so we have an obligation to do what's right in this town fiscally, and we have to have numbers. Um, you know, we need that information. And, we, and that takes some time to get the proper numbers. And we also know that our experience has been with any project that we've pretty much ever done except for probably the library. They've all run over budget. So I think you know there's going to be a factor with that as well. As far as when we should put it on, it's hard for me to determine when I don't have numbers in front of me and I don't have a chance to look at that information. I think it's a little bit premature without seeing that information. And it's frankly a little irresponsible because people want to know um, that we want to do the right thing for the students, and we understand there's overcrowding. I don't think there's anybody sitting here that disagrees with that. I think we all could agree with that. Um, but people want to know what's going to come out of their pocket and how much that's going to cost. And I think we have that responsibility. And so as far as whether we put them together, separate, timing, for me, I need to see the information first. And I think it's a little premature for me at this moment to say June, or February or November or whenever need to see the information because we have responsibilities to the residents. Um, and I and as far as um, the comment about you know people not you know sending us letters or whatever, people stop me because they know I'm on the select board. I go to different places in town and they talk to me about issues as I'm sure they do as with any of us. Well, I mean. I hear what Ms. Bradley's expressing that people should send letters forward. But I will point out that it's difficult for some people to do that when you look at how other members on our board treat each other. It's true. When, you know, people don't want to always come forward uh, and be the brunt of ridicule either. So I think that's really important to realize with people. Um, and, you know, I can tell you from my own profession, a lot of times we'll, uh, people will tell me things in confidence as I work in the healthcare field, because they trust that I will keep their confidence. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Musto. Mr. Zoll. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can I just wait, 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 oh. Mr. Zoll, Mr. Zoll. I know, but I just wanted to ask a procedural thing. You're all right. I'm okay with that. Can we have Nick? Can we have Nick? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Mr. Milano. Can we have Mr. Milano? I know you use that for men and not women. I know I got you. Um, <laughs> can we have Mr. Milano? Um, you did it during Citizen Speak. It's okay, Mr. Chair, I got you. I did? Yeah, you did. Um, you can go back and watch. Um, you used all the women's first names and all the men's last names, mm -hmm. but we're not gonna go with that right now. Um, can we ask Mr. Milano what exactly a debt override looks like or debt exclusion looks like because it's different than an actual operational override. Does he mean so on the first, ballot or on, first? It's for, first. And, and you can, and I don't care what way we take it, but not on the ballot, but how it actually impacts our residents because it impacts it differently than it does an actual override. There's yeah, different nice. metrics of how we actually tax folks. So I think if we're gonna get into what this looks like, and I, it, we don't have to do it tonight. If we can do it on July 9th, that's fine too. But I think that we need to explain to people that there's a difference between an override and a debt exclusion. Well, it's, it's still an override, but it's a debt exclusion. Override. Right. So, but there's a difference in the way that people are taxed. And I think that that is really important that we educate our residents about that difference. And I don't care if it happens tonight or if it happens July 9th. I just really think that it's important that we are upfront and, and, and also educational about the difference of these, these two things. I'm sorry, Mr. Zoll, That's please fine. please continue. I just I wanted that to be on. Yeah, I'm happy to, Mr. Chair, just quickly. So we have been in touch with um, Sean O'Rourke about that question, and we have, based on you know awaiting some cost numbers, it's hard to map that out, but we have been in touch with our financial advisor to prep them to let them know that this is coming, um, and it's coming alongside, potentially, um, an operating override and have had some preliminary conversations about how to structure when to borrow and mm -hmm. um, how that would then affect um, folks' taxes. So the other element that is tricky to time this out is, is when it was will, will or could be approved because that'll affect when we borrow money and when we have to start taxing folks. So long story short, we will likely bring the debt on slowly exactly. and you know borrow a, a certain amount up front and then use that and then borrow a second amount and then maybe a third amount. So folks' taxes, debt service payments for this will increase over time, not necessarily all at once. An operating override, if we increase the tax levy by $5 million, everybody feels that impact of the $5 million in year one. With the debt exclusion, that's not necessarily the case. Once we have more particulars on the amount and the timing, we can and give a, an expectation of what people should expect and when. Um, based on timing and total cost numbers. So it's something we'll work on, but at the end of the day, yes, a debt exclusion usually builds up more slowly um, over time, over a couple of years. Thank you. Return to them. Yes. Thank you. So, Ms. Musto, you and I don't see eye to eye, um, and sometimes when you uh, make a statement, that's false. I sometimes can't help but jump, and Let's I stop my the fault. false. We're not it's, caught. It's my it's my false. it's my fault. I'm 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 apologizing because sometimes people say th things here that are not true, and it's their right to say that, and so that's fine. Um, I, I, what we've heard tonight is from a majority of citizens that took up almost the entirety of, of citizen speak in in one direction, with one exception, Mr. Jackson, who I know and respect and. Was used to be used to be my neighbor, um, but with with one exception, we've heard from everyone in favor of this. When we were debating the MBTA Communities Act, we also had full citizens speak, and guess what? It was not all one sided. It often went back and forth. It went back and forth, and it went back and forth, and it went back and forth, and we still had the election, and we let the citizens decide. We may have people whispering in our ears or telling us things in private, in secret, that they feel one particular way. But as a select board member, all I can say is the town right now is hearing one voice very loudly on this saying that they would like an option to vote. That's all they're saying. And to the d debate about the numbers, we know that the number will almost certainly change over time as it always does. But we know what the ballpark is, and we know the school building committee is working on that, and we know that by the time that the ballot question is passed, we will have a very clear number. But the people who Mr. Wells talks about, who are the volunteers, the people that put in the hard effort, that get in the trenches, that do the hard work to make this work, they're the ones who are here in front of us now telling us that they want to do that work now. And so to say that it's going to be hard, nobody disputes that. Nobody disputes that. To say that it's going to be a burden, 
Nobody disputes that. To say that it would be nice if the state was giving us money instead of taking it away, nobody disputes that either. But we have a very simple choice here. And yes, we don't have a down to the penny count for this. And we probably won't know for a couple of years into the project what the exact cost is. But we're going to have a very good estimate. Oh, no, we'll know. We'll, we'll yeah, have, we're going to have a very we'll good know. estimate. And we're going we're gonna to be able to continue to learn about this before November. So yes, we have a deadline that's imposed on us by state law, August uh, 9th, 7th, August 7th, the first mm -hmm. Wednesday in August. Um, but this is very simple. And I hope if people are listening, <coughs> please run into Ms. Musto at the grocery store, because maybe she doesn't like, like her email, but she likes to be spoken to at the food center. Uh, Mr. Zoll, please. If you see Mr. Cohen please, at the Mr. gas Zoll, station, please talk. Please. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying, Mr. Chair, if they're please. allowed to talk about how they like to be informed by the citizens, I'm just going to encourage folks to, uh, in, to inform them in the way that they prefer to be communicated to. You know, do you is really think? Do you really think this is helping things? It's not. Really? I'm telling you, this is. Believe me, <laughs> forty years I've been working with this town. This is not helping anything, and I've been biting my tongue because I'm trying to give deference. <laughs> to where you are tonight, but it is not. People are watching this and saying, hey, we're talking about $150 million. What did I say the term I used to the other day? This is unprecedented, un, I don't like to show it. He watched me hour after hour after hour. I wonder for now, yes, we came out after three and a half hours. Don't think this is the 50 emails is the majority. It's not. There are people, There are, when we walk in a town hall every day, there's someone sitting behind that desk, the greeter. They're there for a reason because they're working off their tax credits because they can't afford to live in their homes. And we only have 60 slots. That's all we can give. 260 seniors would take those spots. We don't have 260 spots. So, and those are the people who for 20 something years have been holding signs and fighting to keep this town, the quality of life people expect. That's what they expect. But us sitting here fighting and pointing and fingers is not going to get us anywhere. When I tell you about strategy, this is going to take strategy. And if Sheila and Tony were back in this, Mr. Rell and Ms. Egan were back in this room right now, they would agree with me. They would agree with me. I've sat there and listened, it's hard. Mr. Matthews was right. He was right on the vote. It's going to be close. Either way, if we put them together, it's going to be close. But we owe the citizens of this town one thing, leadership. I, no one here has ever said a word about not voting. No one here has ever said a word about not supporting schools. No one. This school vote has nothing to do with MBTA. This school vote has to do with asking the citizens of this town to exclude the restrictions of Proposition 2 and a half. And I tell you as one who has been on that side on more times than I can count, do not for a minute think that 50 emails or even 20 people coming here at Citizen Speak is going to get you there by itself. It won't. It won't get us there. Leadership is what is going to get us there. And I apologize, I, I, but I, we can't get anything done being like this. What does this say about us? We're all elected. People put us in this position. And, and to people came out, well, I'll just as soon quit in any other race I'm running for than to violate the trust of the citizens here. And I don't care whether no there were yes or I'm, no. I'm not, I'm just, I'm thinking about everyone. From the six-year-old that says, build me a school, to the 96-year-old that is living week to week. They can't afford to cut their grass. They can't afford to get food. That is, the, that is what we're responsible for. And we, as a board, cannot take this. I've never said, ever, that we shouldn't vote. What I've said is, this needs to be strategic. And you, you are, emotion is part of it. But this is a battle between your head and your heart. You have to bring them together where your heart emotionally is telling you your town needs this, but your head is saying to you, how is the best way we do it? Because even though the debt exclusion override will not have a number on it, believe me, we're going to have to sell that number. Mm -hmm. We, and I've, I told, you heard me, I said to Sean O'Rourke last week, I am not walking out of this meeting today without telling the citizens of this town a number. And in that room was 
the superintendent, the assistant superintendent, the town treasurer, the town administrator, and the town account. So we didn't hear No, because for me, my I feel it's incumbent upon me as chair to make sure that chair to chair, and we're talking, how many times have you heard me, me say the word to, to Ms. Chair Carroll, lockstep? Have you heard me say that? Yeah. I've said that more times than I can count on. And I, because I feel she's never been through this. And I have great admiration that she's, I, I can see it's uncertain times for her, and I'm trying my best to give her strategies in different ways to how we get this accomplished. But sitting here, pointing fingers, and looking in the rearview mirror, and falsehoods, and this and that, and the other thing, is not going to get us there. And I again, I apologize for showing emotion, but sometimes we have to stay focused on this enormous, enormous, because this isn't just the school. The debt is, the block, every nickel, chair, I know. every nickel we had this year, went to the schools. I Every know. other town was sent hat in hand, don't ask, go away. Every gain they made this year, they lose next year if they don't have an operation override in every other department. We're talking about loss of firefighters, we're talking about no police officers and cruisers, we're talking about libraries being closed, DPW cuts, some every single council and agent in this building we sit in, that so many people come here every day and depend on that most people don't even think about, but this is the lifeblood for so many seniors in our town? I said enough. Mr. Chair, may I ask a clarifying sure, I question? And I apologize. Because you said that we're violating the voters' trust, and I just. No, I did say so And I, I, really I don't mean. Know, I apologize. I, I don't. I mean, I, what I'm I mean not, that is <laughs> that people, they put the trust in us to lead this community. That's, and and, and I, so yeah. we can have different opinions to lead the community. Well, I have finger not, pointing is not going to do I, that. I, I didn't say you didn't. know. I didn't say. I didn't. I didn't say. I apologize. Okay, so I just want this to be crystal clear, clear that the voters' trust has not been violated by anybody on this board. I agree. Okay. I agree. So we're just going to take a breath on that one. I agree. Okay. So I hear you when you say that fifty emails is not a lot. I am just telling you my experience of, <clears> since I've it. been here. I get it. And so. Well, we will defer to you as to when we have to do this. I, I think it might be relevant that we at least we know that we have two dates before we have to make this decision on August 7th. So if you want this to be a vote that we take, it will have to be on the agenda before August 7th. It's July 25th. So, you mean July, whatever, 23rd? July 20th. 23rd. 23rd. So July 23rd, we're going to take a vote. And are we going to hear from Sean O'Rourke? Well, we're going to need to have to name a number, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to... So we're all breathing. <sighs> we're all good. I know those people that are working at the front. They're my clients. A lot of them. So I hear right, you on that. Right. I hear you, Mr. Chair. This is emotional. It's really difficult. And I think that we are debating this the best that we can, given the tools that we currently have on the select board. So thank you for saying that we're gonna vote on this on the 23rd. I appreciate you for saying that. So let me follow up with that. So one of the things that we've talked about, the chairs have talked about, that Chair Carroll is bringing to the school committee one by one, because they don't have a meeting that I'm about propose to each of you to think about tonight not to decide is that my feeling and we've I mean we've had Amy in there we've had Joanna in there we've had and and I'll be honest I've talked to many people um, especially former electeds of both of every entity in this because sometimes I say to myself um, how did I wind up being the one that's chair now? These are always the people that I always looked up to. So, I, and I, I draw, like, I, you hear me laugh very often. I always say, God, I wish John Crona was alive right now. Um, but one of the things that I have said, that I have really f personally struggled for, I've been out of it because I'm listening particularly to the money part, is to do them together. And Chair Carroll has come around to that as well. So the thought, my question, my what I'm saying to each of you tonight, you don't have to answer me, you don't have to comment, I just want you to think about it. 
is I believe we have to do them together because we have no choice but to protect that operational We that that as select board members, that is our primary fiduciary offer. We I mean, we have to protect services. Because I've you've heard me I've, I've said to the superintendent, I'm like, okay, what's your worst one of the worst scenarios you could present? And one of them would be to to pass a debt exclusion and then lose an operational. So now you're building a building, you can't put any people. And it's like, so that's so that the second part of that question is there are only two possibilities. You do them in November or you do them in the spring, one or the other. Then I think we have to. Uh, I'm not saying oh, okay. I just, I, 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 You looked at me like I, I, no, 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 I, I just want to make sure you, I, I'm only giving this to you is to like think about it. You know, I don't want to talk about it anymore. We're going to move on. I said to Nick yesterday, I said, I'm going to present this to all the other members tonight to think about it. I don't want to debate it because it's too big a thing to. You need to think about this. But one of the things I suggest to all of you is, I think about the, Aaron might have a better idea, Miss Bradley might have a better idea because she sits on finance. <laughs> so, so I did that out of, and by the way, I did that out of to make it easy for people who are here it's for the fun. first time. I just Mr. said Chair, their first name. It's I, totally I fine. I'm anyone just anyone out. who knows me, I'm the father of two daughters. Women are everything in the world to me. So, I know that. Um, so since um, you brought yeah. this up, I just have a question for Nick, if I can ask him. Sure. So, Mr. Milano, will we have numbers that we would need to do the override if we were to do this in November? You couldn't do it. <laughs> well, that's, that becomes the challenge on two pieces. The first is arriving at a number that we think is adequate to sufficiently fund the right. services we want to keep and right. to invest in where we want to invest in. Right. And then the second piece is guaranteeing to the town that that's how the money yes. will be spent since exactly. we're not approving a budget. So. Procedurally, do I think there's a way to make that work? Yes, yeah. I think we would have to have a written agreement between this board and the school committee Absolutely. as to how what the numbers okay. is and what how that gets broken out. And then there's you know educating residents about doing it in a new way. Um, right. You know, towns have voted on the override ballot question before town meeting. Yes. Um, but sometimes it's usually a little bit closer to each other. So okay. there's that risk of having a vote in November on an operating override knowing we're not setting a budget until April. So there is, it's a possibility, Okay. but there are challenges brought on by it. Especially since we have an election in April for new town meeting members and we wouldn't vote on it until May, that might be a sticky wicket if we do this in November. That's, yep, that's another I'm just, component I'm, of it for sure. Yep. It's a discussion, I just want to know the answers. Oh. The well, the, the board and the school mm -hmm. committee, select board, and any other committee that wanted to be part of any kind of written under okay. understanding and agreement could commit themselves to it. Okay. But certainly the members will change. I understand. Thank so, you so much. Can I follow up on your... So what part of what I my concern has been, especially between the relationship between the superintendent and the town administrator is, because you know how things rise and pressures come to pull money from pull, as we saw this year again. And that's where... Because you'd be preemptively passing an override earlier than later. Right. Poss if you did right. it, possibly, right. earlier than later. Even if you do it in April, you potentially do it earlier than later. Like, right. they're usually in June. Right, no, I know. Um, I know, look at You'd have to have an, an, an break. Branch, you needed 16, or only went for eight because they want, they've never passed one. Right, they and they're still sure they laying off 43 That's teachers. Right. So um, the superintendent talked about that with us. Um, I will say this, that, and I, 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 again, I thank the chair, I thank Superintendent Burroughs, I thank Assistant Superintendent Pavelcheck, who's been dealing with his own struggles this week. Um, say a prayer for his wife, who's gone through some personal health issues this week, mm -hmm. which is doing well. Um, they've been, they have not said no. We have, we have met, I mean, even today, the chair is in a way on a personal thing, do not call me. She mm -hmm. called me and I said, what are you doing? Call me. I said, don't <laughs> call me. Um, but this, in the, what happens here is for many of the people who are coming here, if the people who are writing to us, they're only being made aware of the debt exclusion and the new school. They're not seeing the needs that we have to have to maintain the nuts and bolts. And I refer to my, fa my late father who spent 44 years here. And he would talk about overrides in the beginning. He says, those are the things that make sure that you, the quality of life that has existed here for over 300 years stays the same. And 
So that's pretty much the discussion we've been having. So you don't have to answer, but you have to, but that's for, for the finance committee, your finance and moving forward, you would have to stick to that because right. political pressures come to try and, because once you do this, and I know some people say, oh, we'll go for an override every three years. It's not gonna happen. It never has, mm -hmm. it's not going to. Ms. Musk. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Couple of questions for Nick. The PowerPoint that you showed us, will you also forward that to us? Sure. Yeah. Um, and then the other questions I have were, um, with regards to any kind of an override, um, debt exclusion or whatever, um, we get our homes revalued every five or six years, and those evaluations usually go up, usually do not go down. So I wonder if when you're tracking this out and how much people will be paying um, with these, if you're able to factor in a factor with that, because typically when you're doing projects, they go up um, as you pull more money. And I'm just wondering, you know, if the home valuations, for instance, last year went up on average X percent, I think you have to factor that in. The other thing is, I think when you're factoring how much people will pay, um, I don't really like when you say the average home. I think it's good to have it per 100,000 because I think people can understand that and wrap their head around per 100,000, this is what you'll be paying. Sure. And um, so I think those things would be important. And the final thing I would say is, um, I would appreciate if, if I wouldn't be personally attacked every time that I speak going forward. And anyone who knows me knows I'm a truthful person. So I just think that it's, um, as Chair Wells had said, you know, people need to work together. And I don't think that's collegial to do that. So I hope that going forward um, that all of us will think about that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the one last thing I just want to add, and this is a caveat, there's not really much we can do about it yet, but it's up on Beacon Hill. It's wrapped into the Municipal Empowerment Act is the ability for cities and towns to bond projects like this for 40 years versus 30 years. And that, you know, being able to spread forward, um, make the mayonnaise cover the bread for, <laughs> it's a little bit thinner, it would be important. And, and it's not at the point where it's before the reps, it's, I don't think it's even, Am I right? It's not even. I think it's in committees. It's in committees, yeah. Point. It hasn't even made it, but um, the good thing is getting it passed is critical because even if we pass this, regardless whether it's in November or the spring, we could rewrite the bond for 40 years versus 30 years. And that yep. is really important because there's, there's Ms. Milano, you might remember, this, when we bought the land for St. Agatha's, land you can bond for 50, 50 years, projects like this you can't. So 40 years would make a big difference, go ahead. Yeah, just a quick question for Mr. Milano, I know, I know we wanna move on, um, but it would be true to say that the last two times that we had a debt exclusion vote in the fall and an override in the spring, an operational override in the spring, both passed. I don't know the history that well that far back. So okay, the, I, I have the- If you do that, I trust the- So that, uh, happened in two, that happened in 2005 and in 2000. <laughs> Just for everyone to know that if we have a debt exclusion in the fall and an operating right. override in the spring, the last two times that's happened, um, both passed successfully. But I think that debt exclusion had money, like you and I have talked, if we'd even had 30% on this project, it would have made that big. I mean, this is, yeah. is one, I, I don't remember, we were at a thing, it was a city council we were talking to, you and I from another community who talked about, because they're building a middle school and they get 65% and he, and he, he couldn't even, he was like 100% by yourselves. He goes, it's daunting. I couldn't even imagine trying to do something like that. So, okay, moving on. Moving um, on. Something we're all going to agree on. Item five, <laughs> post office parking in East Milton Square. Mr. Milano, I'll let you go first. I've already vented it up for tonight. <laughs> Thank you. And I, I, for, I apologize for uh, my unusual temperament tonight. Sorry. Take care. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm just looking for, so I had drafted a letter for the select board to review. Um, I hope that made it into the packet I thought it had. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Well, I didn't see it either. I was it's actually not making it. Today. No? Is it at the end? The very end, page oh, okay. 87 and 88. That was oh, not where it was supposed to be. <laughs> They're usually in order of the agenda I item. I saw it. You want me to paint the picture a little bit here? So I, I asked Mr. Milano for this. I know you probably all see it. I know Mr. Cohane sees it. So about 
three years ago, four years ago, it was a recommendation when I was chair of the traffic commission was that we were going to, as part of the East Milton project, it, Howard Stein Hudson had recommended making Edge Hill and Bullard one way, one down, one up. And in that they converted all the parking spaces on Edge Hill <clears throat> to Angular. It didn't, we didn't gain any, but it, it made the flow of traffic much easier. Somehow in the two years since this has happened, the United States Post Office has taken over every space. In fact, if you, if you drive by on any given day or night, I, I mean, I've heard it from the Mac, I've heard it from residents, I've, I've it just, and the police department has tagged them because they're, you know, it's, a, it's a restricted time limit, but the United States Postal Vehicles are not registered, they do not have a license plate, so there's no way in the Commonwealth to actually tag a vehicle which, a, which doesn't have a plate on a public way. So I said to Mr. Milano that I wanted to bring them in here first, but he uh, suggested that we send a letter. And so I think we need to address this because it's just, not only do they take all those spaces, they park on all, all day on, you know, they park on holiday, they take a lot of spaces. And anyone who goes to the square, whether you live in East Milton like we do, or you just go there for whatever reason, parking is a premium. And I especially empathize or sympathize with the Mac because they have a lot of events at night and people go there and all the spaces are full mm -hmm. for post office trucks that aren't even being used. No, I, I <laughs> had a home yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah. the square. They're not even being there, used. So um, Mr. Monell's drafted the letter, if it's all right with you, if you can at least stop the way. Go ahead, Ms. Buston. Thank you. Um, I would just suggest that we also send it to Congressman Lynch because federal, this is a federal post Someone office. Someone else said that too. I, I think that we idea. should send it. I think to that's him. a good idea. Okay. I mean, I yeah. looked at, I walked it yesterday. I mean, the grass is three feet tall. Like the, like, come on, it's, it was designed to be one of the centerpiece buildings of that square. It's such a unique design, and I don't know what they're doing. But I, I mm. are you okay with? The, are you all right with the letter? Okay. Yeah, enough. I Nick Connors drafted it, and so I think we're good it's to go. Letter. And we do it's ask a good one. It is a good letter. We do it. ask that we. Um, that we're able to set up a meeting just to go over the issues uh, with them. Um, and if we're unable to schedule that meeting or get any response, we can continue to follow up and, and chase with some additional pressure. So My only question is, where, oh, sorry, I'm, I was just where, make a motion. where did these trucks come from? Where were they before? I, yeah. They never parked there when it was regular spaces. <laughs> what made this happen? Like right. what, I go ahead, Mr. Zoll, I apologize. No, you're, you're absolutely right, Mr. Chair. Um, but I, I would also like to move to approve the draft uh, letter with the amendment to uh, also address it to Congressman Lynch uh, mm -hmm. and the Postmaster General regarding parking at the East Milton Post Office. A second. Seconded by Ms. Musto. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Moving right along. Thank you. <coughs> Item six, discussion of the Milton Fire Station, which is engine two, which future use and Disposition, you want this, Mr. Musto? I guess yeah, I thought Mr. Mr. Walsh was coming, but he's not. Well, that's I, what I wanted to. I <laughs> think I may have failed to properly coordinate with him. So, so, I why, don't we suggest, move, right, so let's, yeah. uh, why don't we defer this to when he can be here? Yeah, as I agree. I, as I, okay, and good. just as an update for the board, so we're moving into uh, pre qualification for bidders and contractors for the East Milton Station. So that is moving forward. And then, as this agenda item suggests, it's time to start thinking about what are we going to do with the station once it is vacated, which still is somewhat down the line, but a lot of work goes into selling municipal land if that's the choice of the select board. So start thinking about, you know, do we want to keep the building if we sell it? Do we want the building to stay? Do we want to put other kind of restrictions on that property? Um, and so just start to germinate and, and then we can pick up the conversation <laughs> at a future meeting. Oh, I'm but, germinating. <laughs> so let's say you're fer I'm fermenting. A, there you go. Right? I'm about to brew pub. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help Don't ever commit a crime, will you do it? You're not going to get away with it. Um, I, I, I wasn't even thinking. I would, so um, what Chia Walsh will have, that they've got some appraisals on what it's worth. It does need some significant work on that floor. Um, and I, I I do know that it does have some significant value. So let's bring him in and then we'll talk about that. that yeah, it makes sense. Okay. One of the one of the possibilities that they've talked about with it for us um, is that perhaps we move because like if they start in August or so whenever they're only that's only a nine month project to, to 
from start to move in on that. It's a single engine station, a single response station. So, um, is it if we could do this and come to a successful conclusion, whatever it is that whatever the disposition is, should it be sold or leased or rented or whatever, that the purchaser, or leaser, or a renter um, rents it back to us for a couple of months till we're ready to move it, so let's let them get back. Um, okay. Item seven, discussion, to approval, town board, and committee appointments and reappointments in accordance with the list so, below. Mr. Chair, I would like to move to reappoint the following individuals to the Commission on Disability for a three-year term. Natalie Bellamare, James R. Brown, Jr., Ashley Fawcett Green. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Mr. Chair, Aye. I'd like to move to appoint the following individuals as members of the council. Oh, no, we're going to defer. We're going to oh, defer. Sorry. We're going to defer. defer sorry, we're going to defer okay. council okay. until. Um, then I would like to move to appoint the following individuals to the Climate Action Planning Committee for a one year term. Fiona Javon, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Kim Johnson. There's a little, can I interrupt you? Yes. Oh, sorry. We're actually, yeah. um, these are the, and for climate action planning, these are the ones, these are the candidates. Um, Do we but not have we, spots for all of them? We have a, one youth spot for um, Reagan Gil Martin, um, okay. if the board is interested in appointing. And then there are three additional positions available um, of this group. Um, if the board. Did we get a recommendation from the Comment. Climate Action Planning Committee? No. We did not. No, I and I only know one of them. So, so I, I know why don't we know one. Yeah, for know for one, can we just, uh, uh, I move to appoint um, Reagan Gilmartin, the Milton yeah, High School yeah. student, uh, to the Climate Action Planning Committee for a one year term. Second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So you want to come, you want to take some time to think about this and then each submit? Um, can we ask the Climate Co Action Planning Committee to? Tell us their views. Do they have a chair? Yes, Alex Hasha is still the chair, and they had um, reached out beforehand, but um, I can follow up with him because we got some additional applicants since we last heard from oh, uh, from okay. Alex. Then we should okay. yeah, then consider let's defer everybody. To them. He's not listed, right? He's already been Alex, he's, he's, chair. Not he's, the chair. Yeah, he's the chair. He doesn't he's need to be honest. reappointed. He's, oh, he's just appointed. So okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, then maybe I will ask, is there anything that might hold up the equity and justice for all? No, nope, sorry, okay. no, I'll get So <laughs> I will move to reappoint the following individuals to the equity and justice for all advisory committee for a one-year term. Kevin McElhaney, Kenji Mattire, Sarah Myrie, Jane Ogata, Ralph Parent, Sarah Porter, and Yolanda Thomas, with apologies for mispronunciations. Do we have I'll a second? A second. Second by Ms. Musto. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Historical Commission? All reappointments. Yep. Um, so I'll move to reappoint the following individuals to the Historical Commission for a three year term Ellen An Anceloni, Meredith Hall, Frederick McFadden, William Mullen, Mary Noble, Stephen O'Donnell, and Linda Weld. I'll second. Can, Can I ask a question? <clears throat> sure. Is Ms. Hall uh, the appointment from the Planning Board? No, I think no. she's been on it. I think she's just. Okay. Oh, she is on the Planning They don't board. have okay. a spot on there? Right. The Planning Board doesn't? No, this is just, she's okay. been serving on the I just she's, she's been on, I think, since, she's been on it since before she was on the planning board. If That's my, awesome. I just thought it's it was a they planning. Don't have a spot. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I was just trying to figure that one out. Go ahead. I, oh, oh, seconded. Yes. <laughs> seconded, yeah. It's yeah. been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. Uh, so we're okay on the next one. Yep. Uh, candidates for reappointment. Sorry, I'd like to move to reappoint the following individuals to the local historic district study committee for a one year term. Andrew Hoffman, Larry Loeffler, Ryan McLean, William S. Mullen, and Douglas Skybeck. Do have a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I would Wait. like to move oh, to... Oh, oh. No. Well, what's... We have one more for that's a that's a, a appointment, appointment instead of a reappointment. Can we do that or no? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's like room to. for it. Yeah. Move to, I'd like to move to appoint the following individuals to local historic district study committee for a one-year term. Ryan O'Halloran. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Municipal Broadband. Uh, I would like to move to reappoint the following individuals to the Municipal Broadband Committee for a one-year term. Joseph Chamberlain, Mark Day, Robert F. Lynch Jr., John E. Sullivan. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I would like, to, we're all good on this one too? Yes. I would like to move to reappoint the following individuals to the Shade Tree Advisory Committee for a one-year term. Laura Beebe, Nancy Chisholm, Merida Manning Cronin, Maura Doherty, William Madden and Fred Taylor. I'll second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 You just slap me if I get if they're no, sure. All right. Okay. okay. All good. Move to re move to reappoint the following individuals to the sign review committee for a one year term. Lawrence Johnson, Deborah Azarad, Savona, Douglas Seibeck, Laura Simodi, Don John Zykowitz. I'll second. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I move to reappoint the following individuals to the Telecommunications Design Review Committee for a three-year term. Sean Fahey. Second. Does someone second that? Second. Second by Ms. Musto. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now you're on a new appointment. Okay. Now I move to appoint the following individuals to a Telecommunications Re Design Review Committee for a three-year term. Tim Lyons. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, move to reappoint the following individuals to the Trustees of Affordable Housing Trust for a one-year term. Thomas Callahan, Kathleen Conlon, and Julie Kramer. So I believe we have. I second that. No, you can. I, I know you second it. I think there's. Uh, all right, so go ahead. Okay, you can second that. But I think you need to. Do we need have to, to do them, in, have a have to do them individually. No, you have to do them individually. So why don't we do them one at a time? Let's start with Julie Kramer who's the chair. So one, make her the vote. Um, I will move to reappoint uh, Julie Kramer to uh, the trustees of the Affordable Housing Trust for a one-year term. I'll second. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Move to reappoint the, uh, <laughs> Kathleen Conlin to the Trustees of Affordable Housing Trust for a one-year term. I'll so second. Second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Move to appoint Thomas Callahan to the Trustees of the Affordable Housing Trust for a one-year term. Do I have a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Uh, no, he said I. I, I was. Well, well, I'm confused. He said I. He said I. I. One said second. I. Can I? I'm confused. Yeah. Can I clarify? Yes. I would also like a clarification as to why we. Well, well I, I, we, in all the other ones, we voted in for reappointment and we avoid voted in the appointment. Are you saying there's not enough positions here? Because I didn't know. Oh, that. No, 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 there there's, not. There's. We have actually. We could vote all five of these. We have vacancies <laughs> on this, <laughs> even beyond the. But uh, we can vote all five, five of the one, two, yes. three, yes. four, five. So then I'm. Okay. 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 So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Is there abstention? Nope. Okay. Oh, abstention? Oh, so all those. Next one. Okay. Uh, move to appoint the following individuals. Do you want these individually too, or can we do them as a group? No, no, no. You're I, I, since I, I sit on this one, I know that we have. We only have one. Don't we only have one? There's two listed on the warrant, or on the. Uh, but how agenda. many positions do we have? I think we only have one up position. Up nine. There's, right? Yeah, there's four open spots right now. Mm. So they could both make so it in. So we can both make it in. So I'm and it's a great committee, so two more people for and those at home. We can. Oh, we well, want that, them all. I was wondering where you were. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the camera. <laughs> all right, hold on one sec. I'm a little confused. Why? Because so I, I don't understand. I understand there's only one position, one open. No, there's four sure? open positions. On the four affordable open housing positions. trust. Yes. After we do all these. Okay. There's still four. Make your motion. Yeah. Yeah. There's still. Yeah. There's still. There's two more slots. That's why I keep advertising. There's for two it. more after we do all these. Okay. Okay. So I move to appoint the following individuals to the trustees of Affordable Housing Trust for a three-year term: Warren Lizio and Matt Morong. Second. second. All those okay. in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Item A, Mr. Zoll. So this is just a very brief um, request from the Affordable Housing Trust. So the Planning Board, uh, the Select Board, and uh, I know that other other organizations have appointed folks to the uh, review committee. For the um, uh, for the town farm project, so um, the affordable housing trust is uh, requesting that we meet as the governors of uh, of, of the governors of the Stoughton Trust trustees at our next meeting, so that we can get that committee in motion. So, do we we haven't appointed anyone yet, though? The trustees uh, have we not appointed no. right. Uh, no, I don't think we did. I no, think we, I we, we appointed you because we said I. No, I we didn't. No, do we didn't Neither one of us did anything. it. We said we didn't do it. <laughs> Do you huh. not remember being appointed? Well, you know, I don't, I, it, there's been a I'll, lot I'll of look things. back through the minutes. Yeah. I thought we appointed Ms. Bradley, but either way, oh, we, we, we should meet as the Governor Stoughton oh, Trust. Oh, to, to look at the plans? Yes, just to review the yes, plans. Yes, I was appointed to that. You sure? Yes. Yeah. You're lucky, you were double check that. The full committee was never set up. What the that trustees is. did is they designated one trustee, but then we had reached out to the other boards as well as to abutters and in the neighborhoods. Yeah, so we have for three names. people, three abutters and right. one non-abutter. <laughs> expert the affordable housing trust has a rec has a recommendation we have a recommendation the planning board has a recommendation correct and, and that's just to review as well and to the plan to review the plans which are then presented correct yes the, i was appointed to that yeah. last so it's not year. like a, a, no. fi a final it's just a review committee correct it so is. that was the, that's the only request okay, I got that okay. Right. mr milano uh sorry mr chair um town administrator's report I feel like I did not prepare for that this evening, so I will share updates in another means. Mm -hmm. The Select Board Landing Committee had a nice uh, outdoor meeting down at the landing to hear from Scott McKay. 
um, about the War Park project as well as um, review um, activities at the landing uh, this morning. So we'll report more fully on that at our next meeting um, as an agenda item. But um, at this moment, nothing else. Mr. Chair, I'll defer back to you. I think just to follow up to I think we would, uh, uh, the landing committee did not vote to, I think we will make a recommendation to this board, but I think we will want to support that WAF project before the CPC. Great. He has three options, which I had sent. Did, they, did he send that just to our committee or did that go to? I didn't see it. I did so committee. Can we that send committee. that out to the whole board so yep. they can see can it? Do that. They have three yeah. options that are out there. I think the number he's talking, Scott, was, was like seven, did I say 750? Did he say 750? Right? Seven, yeah. I've gone for, to both presentations just to listen. Um, they, they're each uniquely different. Um, they've been well attended, all of them. Uh, there does seem to be a lot of support. I'm personally, I'm not gonna, I'm glad that's staying there. But so I would say we'll have a meeting again to have something to report to you. But let's get you guys so you can all see them. They're, they're, mm -hmm. That'd be great. They're very unique. Nothing else? No, uh, Mr. Chair. So can I ask Ms. Bradley, absolutely. You can you ask anything you want. Thank you so much. It's 849, you've got 11 be minutes. <laughs> as possible. Um, I wanted to ask Mr. Milano how the recording of the boards and committees, or the boards, were going, um, because we haven't had an update on that. And I, I'm just going to be honest, I've not looked at, on MATV for all of those wonderful mm -hmm. recordings. I don't think, I don't think mm -hmm. you can yet. You have the, to be approved by the AG. The bylaw is not in effect yet. Yeah. Thank I mean, you so much. The law unit needs to. Yeah. And so when are we expecting that at some point this year? I'd say in the. I'd say probably end of September. Okay. October. Thank you so much. But I will let you know if that changes. Can Can I ask Mr. Milano a question too, very quick? <laughs> this seems like the only place course. we can That's talk fine. to you. Um, <laughs> the uh, The website for contacting town meeting members it doesn't seem to ha has that really been set up yet. It, we reached out and got very little interest. Um, so the moderator and the town clerk and I haven't regrouped on where to go from here. But um, we had. Um, not a lot of responses, so how, it didn't did feel like it was out? sufficiently. Um, we had reached out through um, emails to town meeting members at the beginning of this year. I, think I don't was remember it. receiving that as a town meeting member. To um, have your, Email. to be able to get, uh, if somebody wants to write to all their precinct yep. members, well, it goes as a blast. Done. That should have happened. We, were we didn't collect <laughs> much responses um, when, we, when we reached out on it. Could I ask that we get maybe check back on sure. who, when that was sent, because I don't remember ever, as a town meeting member. I didn't get that anything email. as a town yep. meeting member. Um, and so it would be important, I think, to make sure that we're following through on that. Yeah, I can do that. That's People fine. deserve to be able to communicate with the town members. Thank you. I have a question for Mr. Milano. <laughs> <laughs> well, a comment and a question. The well, first... Now we're going to have two from. You're going to write them. <laughs> It'll be the, the, the Mr. Milano. That's my report, <laughs> not Q&A. <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, when you go on to the boards and committees, um, and even uh, any of the boards or committees that you go on to. Um, what's happening is that when you go on there, you don't find the minutes on that um, frame where yep. you have to go to the agenda in minutes. Correct. And so is there a way, I think before it used to be on, when you clicked on to the specific it board, it was on there. And I'm wondering, um, I think sometimes people are like, we don't have minutes for X, Y, and Z, but they are there. Um, just have to go to the right, level. and so I'm just wondering, is there a way to put them on that other page? I've, I've gotten that as a couple of comments. And the second comment I've got is, um, and I know Ms. Bradley will laugh at this because we haven't gotten a lot of the minutes up to date. You know how that's my big oh, thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the committees, um, again, you know, we're missing, and uh, I mean, I have to go through and look again, but we are missing a significant number of um, minutes, you know. Mm -hmm. And so my concern is, you know, if committees are meeting and they don't have minutes, maybe we should consider some kind of a, a message to them that, sure. you know, if you're behind in two or three months, then you really can't meet because we don't really know what's going on um, on those. So I do think that is an issue. Right. And if they're not meeting them, that's also an issue. <laughs> <laughs> I can, okay. I, we can take a, do a little survey on who's where um, and follow up. In terms of putting minutes on individual board and committee pages, it's not how the site is structured to work that way. However, some committees have at the front when you click on their name, yep. it says agendas and minutes and says to view our agendas and minutes, click here. So yeah. it's a direct link, but some pages don't have that. So we can clean it up so that they all have the same notice when you click on the 
Cultural Council Committee, the first thing you see is how to see their agendas and minutes to direct you to the agenda center. The benefit of the new way it's set up is if you're looking for minutes for a committee, now they're all there for right. all of the years. So it's it's structured slightly differently, uh, but we can yeah. make that. Just if it could direct them to no, it. No, that please, change we can I make. I think that yep. is a problem because right. not everybody does that second step. No, I agree. Yep. So that would be great. Thank That's you. Fine. We good? Uh, thank you for the Q and A. Okay. Sure. <laughs> no, any, well, anytime. <laughs> okay. So, in my report, um, I just do want to say thank you to everyone who came to Milton Music Fest again this weekend. It was our eleventh year. There were well over three thousand people came over the two days, and I would be remiss not to thank so many volunteers, but especially the town departments, Public Works, Consolidated Parks, who really helped us do this. Just an amazing thing to see a field that sat idle for so long to have so many come to it each and every year. And um, I'm very grateful on behalf of our committee to everyone who took part in that. And that's it. Thank so then, then we're going to go. Public then, comment response? Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. That's right. I think we had enough of that for tonight. But, uh, <laughs> I just want to make sure that it's on, on the record for public comment response is that you, Mr. Chair, said that we would be taking a vote of this on July 23rd. You don't trust me. I just want it on I record. It. I do it's trust not that, that was, was it. It's, it's not tape. I it was. Tape. I just want to say it because now this is public comment, and that's all we heard about for the last two weeks, two times. So I just want to say it. <laughs> Agenda minutes. So, looking to approve a discussion approval meeting minutes for December twenty eighth and March fifteenth. This. Will yeah. not include yes. Mr. Cohane because he wasn't here for either of those. So, Mr. Chair, my understanding, in case people at home are wondering, we had this clarified earlier, that the reason we're approving minutes from December 28th and March 15th is that these were short meetings um, that led into executive sessions at irregular times and hadn't, just for administrative reasons, come up for approval before. Um, so, in case people are wondering, as I wondered why we were doing this, I just wanted to say that. And then I would like to move to approve the uh, meeting minutes for December 28th, 2023, and March 15, 2024. I'll second. All those in favor? There's going to be a roll call vote. Ms. Ms. I'm just going to do as well. Um, Ms. Bradley? Yes. Ms. I. Ms. Mustel? Yes. Mr. Zoll? Yes. And myself? Yes. I'm staying. You're upside. Yeah, you're off the <laughs> hook. Um, okay. So, item 13 future meeting dates. So, I was going to suggest that. I, I found out the school committee gets the summer off. We ran for the wrong job. <laughs> um, that we take the ninth off. There's nothing really pressing. We're going to put anything significant off till the 23rd. In absence, I'll be out of state and completely out of communication from the 5th to the 14th. Can, the 4th. Go ahead. Uh, so just because uh, I know, um, and again, I do, do not mean this as a personal attack, but I know that Ms. Musto wants to review numbers from the school building committee in advance of the vote. And I worry that if we have the school building present, school building committee presentation on the 23rd same day, that we won't have enough time to sort of reflect on those numbers. Well, and so I forward. wonder, I'm sorry? They could send things forward. That's what I was going to say. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Already, yeah. we've already told him that the yeah. second that they know, I mean, it does bother me that you're pushing such a, on such a big, but um, I believe he's going to give it to uh, yep. Mr. Milano the second he has So it. I think if nobody has any complaints about receiving them in advance and then making the vote on the 23rd, then I think that that's fine. Uh, but I just wanted to, and yes, yeah, sorry, Ms. Mosta. Well, oh, no, it's fine. Um, I think as long as we have enough information on the 20th, like before that and on the 23rd to make an educated decision. And we'll have the school building committee uh, present also on the 23rd. Yes, briefly. Not We don't need, I told him we don't need a whole like We don't need the history. Yeah, yeah. We don't need the history anymore. We, we, um, okay. So I, the only, the I only, find only okay. On so the, and the only other thing is, if something happens, like you know, when Nick calls like a quick morning meeting that you could do remotely, uh, something that business like. Yes, I was going to say we likely will have some end of fiscal year business yeah, to attend so. to between now and the fifteenth. Um, so perhaps. Um, oh, between now. And July. The, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, on the twenty third. Yeah. So I will maybe check in with everybody for their availability over the next couple of weeks and see what might work mm -hmm. for a kind of business meeting of a couple of items. Okay. July 4th, 6 p.m. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm around. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that answers that. So then the, the next thing open. is, <laughs> we good? So I'm gonna to move to item 14, which is we're going to enter into an executive session pursuant to Master General Law 38, 
to discuss response to an open meeting or complaint filed by Philip Johanning against the Mill Select Board. And so I move to adjourn from open session and enter into executive session to discuss a response to an open meeting law complaint, to discuss a response to an open meeting law complaint filed by Philip Johanning against the Milton Select Board based on my belief that discussion of this matter in open session may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the Select Board. The Select Board will not return to open session. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second, second by Ms. Musto. I'll, 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 I'll do roll call vote. Um, Ms. Bradley? Yes. Mr. Cohane? Yes. Ms. Musto? Yes. Mr. Zoll? Yes. And myself? Yes. We are adjourned. And that's what do we have a second? Uh, Sorry, there are two oh, executive oh, yeah, we do. Oh, yeah. yeah, I did. I do. Okay, so now I move also to adjourn from open and it's an executive session to approve the release of executive session meeting minutes related to litigation against the Federal Aviation Administration number 221521. United States Court of Appeals, First Circuit, dated June 29, 2022, October 5th, 2022, November 14th, 2023, December 11th, 2023, December 19th, 2023, December 28th, 2023, and January 9th, 2024. And again, the select board will not be returning to open session. Do I have a second? Sure, I'll second. Second by Ms. Musto. Roll call vote. Ms. Bradley? Yes. Mr. Cohane? Yes. Ms. Musto? Yes. Mr. Zola? Yes. Myself? Yes. Uh, do I have one more here? Is that, I have one more, right? Do I have a third? Nope, that's right. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, any future agenda items, if you can get them to Mr. Milano? I don't think we have enough on our plate. Okay, <laughs> motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn from, well, no, we, are, we, no, already we, just, we already did that. Oh, you already did that. Yeah, we did that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just reading the, yeah. the freaking <laughs> Lynch cheat sheet here. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy your nights. Thank you. Take care.